Blessings and welcome to your program, Jeremiah 2911, with your host, Dr. Marisol Peltzer and my beloved husband, Reverend Dexter Peltzer. But Dexter's not here today, but I have a special guest, my special personal friend and co laborer in the ministry, Reverend Sheila Hightower. Amen. Amen. So, Sheila, say hi to the studio audience. Good evening, good day. May the Lord bless you. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Amen. And today's program is exciting, okay? Today we're going to be talking about the price that we need to pay to walk in miracles, signs, and wonders. Um, Dexter, myself, and my spiritual mother, Sheila, did a study over a like, couple of days of a wonderful book, um, the Price of God's Miracle Working Power by A.A. A. Allen. And A.A. A. Allen was an evangelist who was powerful. Amen? Amen. And um, he was amazing. He wasn't perfect, but not everybody who's listed in Hebrews 11 was perfect. That's Amen? true. <laughs> and spotless. Um, but nonetheless, he had a powerful ministry which followed was he worked, he, he operated in miracles, signs, and wonders. And miracles, signs, and wonders are important because they confirm the gospel. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we live a world where people need to be healed, where people need to be restored. There's so much need out there today. Amen? Amen. So we're going to be teaching about this and the price that you as a believer have to pay to walk in this because there's a price to be paid. But before we begin, I'm going to ask Sister Sheila to pray for the program. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you and with this audience today. We thank you, Lord, that as the word goes forth in yes. power, that it will reach every heart, every mind, that revelation and illumination will come. And we just thank you, Father, for everything that will be done today. We thank you that your people, Lord, will be made holy, will be um, walking greater relationship with you as a result of this broadcast today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to ask Sheila to read Mark 16, 17, and 18. Amen. Because we always want to confirm everything that we speak with the word of God. Amen. Amen. So reading from the New King James, Mark 16, verses 17 and 18. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly, anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Amen. Amen. So we see that when we use the name of Jesus, Miracles, signs, and wonders happen. Absolutely. And, and in order to walk in that power, we need to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So we have to be anointed. Mm -hmm. And when you are anointed, it's because you have a measure of the Holy Spirit, right? Absolutely. So we all get baptized with the Holy Spirit. For the more measure of the Holy Spirit that we have, the more anointed that we are. So if you're practical like me, you're probably asking yourself, how do I get more anointing, right? Amen. <laughs> how do I get more, <laughs> right? And, but to get that more, you have to pay a price, okay? And I want to go to somebody who had pay that price, okay? And we're going to start there, okay? Let's go to Revelation 1, 17. And, and this is a man who has a relationship with the Lord. How do you get more anointing? With relationship. To know him and to follow him in the power of the resurrection, okay? Amen. So let's go to 1, 17, amen? In Revelation 1, 17. I have it right here. And it says, hallelujah, thank you, Father. When I saw him, who is him? The Lord, right? I felt at his feet as 
though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the Alpha and the Omega. So it's amazing. God revealed himself to, to John, the revelator here. But John was praying. When the Lord gave him this vision, he was praying. But we have to go before God and seek him in a prayer closet in such a way that when his presence becomes evident and it is so strong, we fall flat on our faces like we're dead. <laughs> Amen. That the, the presence of God just becomes uh, on us and we feel his presence. And how many of us can really say that we've experienced that? Amen. Amen. I mean, and it's amazing. And, and we have to, and then dead in reverence, like feel his presence so bad that you just feel like you just have to prostrate yourself before him and humble yourself before him. So that also implies that we have to what? Die to, our to ourselves. Amen. That we have to die to ourselves. And, and, and that we have to know him. We have to know the word. We have to have relationship. We have to have a, a life of prayer, a life of consecration, a life of reading the word. We cannot be status quo. Go to church on Sunday. Then forget about the Lord to Wednesday night, and then go to Wednesday night, sing two songs. We got to be radically sold out to Him. That's what a radical surrender to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So Sheila, do you did you know anybody who's radically surrendered to the Lord in this way? Yes, I do. So what are some of those? those things that you see in those people's lives that you think make a difference? First of all, it is that they are sold out to the Lord. Amen. And what that means is that He comes first. The anointing takes priority in their lives. So for some people, that means getting up earlier mm -hmm. so that you can spend time with the Lord early in the morning. It means being separated and set apart for the Lord. Mm -hmm. So that's time in consecration, fasting and prayer, time in his word, so that you have his word. Because remember, the word is Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we are partakers of that bread of life. Mm -hmm. Amen. And another thing that is so important is... When we want to walk in miracles, signs, and wonders, we are operating in the gifts of the Spirit, right? Um, and, and we are operating in the word of knowledge, in the gift of miracles, in the gift of faith, um, in the prophetic, right? So one of the things we have to understand that we want to walk in miracles, signs, and wonders, and that we have to give all the glory and all the honor to the Lord, and that what we freely receive we freely give, okay? We cannot adulterate or prostitute God's gifts and sell them, okay? And so, again, and so that's more important because if you do, do you think God's going to continue to bless you and give you more? Absolutely not. No. We have to be good stewards of the gifts that the Lord gives us. And let me read you. Matthew 10, 7, okay? It says, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those that have leprosy. Those are working in miracles. Drive out demons. Freely you have received. Freely you give. Amen. If you want to walk in power, you have to understand what you freely receive, you freely give. And the scripture teaches us that we should covet earnestly the best, the best gifts. Yes. So let's go to 
1 Corinthians 12, 31, right? So we're just setting the foundation before we, um, we start talking, okay? And when we're preaching this, we're preaching it to ourselves, too. Amen. <laughs> because I want to walk in the fullness of what God has for me. Amen. Amen. And, and I want to be used mightily of God, but I want to be a good steward and be faithful with the gifts that he gives me. He says, but eagerly desire the greater gifts. Okay? So the Lord wants us to desire the greater gifts, right? So if he wants us to desire them, that implies that he wants to give them to us, he right? He definitely wants to give them to us. To us. And, but we have to be faithful. We have to be good stewards of those gifts. Amen. Um, and here in this book, Brother Allen describes, he wanted to work in miracle signs and wonders. So what he did, he, he locked himself up in his closet to the Lord spoke to him. And the Lord came and spoke to him and give, gave him 11 points that he needed to check off the list. And two personal things that he needed to check off the list to walk in miracle signs and wonders. Amen. Amen. So before we, we talk about each of those things, we're setting the foundation. Okay. So, and, and then in order to walk in the miracle working power, we have to baptize with the Holy Spirit. And in the book, he talks about the Holy Spirit as electricity. And, and we want to talk a little bit about that because I find that example fascinating, Sheila. It is. So you have the book, so you can, um, it is fascinating um, how he talks about that. Okay. I just want to read you this mm -hmm. quote because mm -hmm. it, it synthesizes this so perfectly. Mm -hmm. He says, the power of the Holy Ghost may be readily likened to the power of electricity. When one is filled with the Spirit, it is as though he has had his house wired and established connection with the powerhouse. Mm -hmm. Many people use electricity for years just to provide light. They never take advantage of the great possibilities that are available through using the appliances which electricity will operate. The gifts of the Spirit may be likened to the appliances. Isn't that a great example? It's an amazing example. And I drink a lot of coffee, okay? I drink a lot of coffee. But if you look at the evolution of coffee machines, you can get an idea, okay? Like, you know how you just simply have the coffee machine, you plug in with a button, boom, right? Then we came up with um, the the machines that grind the beans <laughs> on top and then yeah. they make the coffee. Then if that wasn't enough, then they came up with the, the espresso machines, <laughs> right? Then it's the same appliance, the same gift, right? But if, then they came up with the Curie. I mean, I, I had a Curie and I thought I was in heaven, sister. And the Curie, you have that little pod, you put it, put in, it in there. In, and push the button, right? It's an, and, and then they came up with the Nespresso's, which make cappuccino, which make lattes. They make co coffee. Everything. Everything. So you see a gift, it, it, it becomes more sophisticated and, and grown as you use it and, and as you learn how to use it in the Lord. Absolutely. It's um, a natural progression, right? A progression from the beginning, and then you go a little further, and you go a little further. The bar is set higher, mm -hmm. and the release is greater. Mm -hmm. The release is greater. And one of the things that really spoke to me is that he locked up himself in the closet till the Lord spoke to him. Yes. How many of us take the time to lock up ourselves up with the Lord? And that's the thing that we need the most, is to just lock ourselves away with the Lord. It's like taking a mini retreat. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, and, and that led me to ask myself a question, Sheila. Because you know, we got to start with ourselves. And the question is, are you willing to pay the price for the anointing? And the anointing of yesterday, 
is not the anointing you need for today. That's right. Um, you need a new anointing every day. Because oil, if you ever had anointing oil and you put it in a little bottle and it ages, after a certain time, it gets old and it stinks. smells. That's right. It stinks. So if you want to use that oil oil of two weeks ago to solve for the problem today, that's not going to work. So you got to get that new anointing every day. You got to receive the new wine skin. Um, and, and, and we have to, before we build a house, you have to count the cost. Absolutely. And you have to start, you buy it, you count the cost. How much is it going to cost me to make it? Then you have a contingency budget for the emergencies that might come up. Then, then you start building. But once you start building, you cannot look back. Because if you look back and you stop, you're going to get stuck with all these materials. And then if you haven't count the cost and you don't have enough money to build it, you might be halfway done and might have a house without a roof. And you're stuck. And you're stuck. So we really have to count the cost. Absolutely. So, I mean, and so many Christians, we, we don't do that. We don't count the cost. We don't look of what does this imply in my life, short term, long term, to my family, to the people around me. What is it going to cost me? And, and you know, like, um, I've had the privilege of um, working with uh, Carlos Anacondia, which is a great revivalist. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... He, that man prayed a dear price. You know, we used to have the campaign, and we would finish at 2 and 3 in the morning, but he didn't go home and sleep. At that time, he used to go pray in the mountain. And then to, like, the morning, and then he would go to sleep for maybe five or six hours. All these people that are great women and men of God, they've paid a price. A huge price, and they don't pay it once. They pay it continuously. Continuously. All the time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, so many people, they just want the anointing from somebody else. They want it imparted. They, they, they want to get it. They want to manipulate. And the best thing to do is to get the anointing from God himself. And the way that you do it is you lock yourself up. <laughs> And you say, Lord, I need a tune-up. What do I need to change? What do I need to repent? What, are that, what is that list that you want to give to me so that I can walk in what you have for me? Amen. Amen. Have you ever done that? Yes. Many times, haven't you? Yes. Yes. And, you know, when God, the Word of God says this in Romans 8, 14, those that are led by the Holy Spirit, the, those are the ones that are his true sons and daughters. So when you're led, you're guided. You surrender to when God speaks to you something, you obey it. So when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, he teaches you, he corrects you, and he admonishes you sometimes. He pulls yes. your ear. Yes. I've been corrected by the Holy Spirit, haven't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, so count the costs and don't look back. So I'm going to say the 11 things that the brother um, came up with. And we're going to say the 11 things. And then if we have time, we'll, we'll talk about them in, um, in depth. The first thing that he said was the disciple is not above his master, master nor the servant above his Lord, which is very interesting, Sheila. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, the word says that we would do um, greater miracles than Jesus did, right? So the, uh, when we first look at this, when I first looked at it, I'm like, this is like a contradiction, right? Right. But it's not a contradiction because 
what he's speaking here about is persecution. Amen. Amen. Persecution. And, and you were reading a quote in there um, about persecution, which was amazing. You were telling me about it. Uh, yes. I was actually reading. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I can't find it just okay. now. We'll come back to it. It says, um, he, this is what it says. Um, persecution is one of the universal results of manifested power. Persecution is one of the results of manifested power. So when Jesus went about doing miracles, signs, and wonders, he was persecuted by the Sadducees right. and the Pharisees. And they were the religious people of the time. So we're going to do greater miracles than Jesus did. And because Jesus was persecuted, okay, we're going to have the same, we're going to, and so therefore, we're going to be persecuted too, okay? Right. So that's what it's saying. Second Timothy 3.12, it says, yeah, and yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. persecution. So if we want to walk in miracle signs and wonders, you have to understand that you will suffer persecution. Are you willing to pay that price to suffer persecution? Yes, you know, the a. A. Allen said that while Jesus remained a carpenter in the carpenter shop in Nazareth, mm -hmm. there was no persecution. Right. But the moment he started to do mighty things, mm -hmm. he was called Prince of Devils, and attempts began to be made to destroy his life. And the persecution continued through the three and a half years of his ministry. And therefore, that comment that the servant is not greater than his master. Right. Tells mm -hmm. us that we should expect that in this life we will suffer persecution, but that should not in any way stop us or hinder us from doing the things that the Lord has called us to. And persecution is painful. I don't know if you ever suffer persecution for the gospel, but it hurts, you know? Because sometimes persecution comes from the people that are the closest to you, you mm -hmm. know? And, um, and we have both had the privilege of being um, close to sister, Dr. Mary Kay Boxer, which is my spiritual mom. And she suffers a lot of persecution. You should see, Sheila, when I post some of the programs that she's in, the persecution that she goes through and the Price that she's paid for that. Absolutely. Because when you are in the public eye and you're doing all these things, people will attack you because jealous, envy, and they will attack you. How many people don't attack all these mighty men of God? And I'm like, why are they doing that? It's because of what the Word says. If you walk like Jesus did, miracle signs and wonders, when you have power, you will have Persecution. persecution. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, are you willing to endure persecution for the kingdom purposes? Okay? That's one of the things that you have to be fully understand. Okay? And it's amazing. And then number two, the disciple is not above his master. Okay? But everyone that is perfect should be as his master. master. That is interesting. When I read this, I was like, whoa, this is too much. This is really, 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 really too much. And then Dexter, my husband, said, Marisol, don't you remember that scripture that the Lord gave um, the, uh, the apostolic, the prophets, evangelists, apostles, teachers, for the perfection of the saints. And I went, ouch! Because in the word says that we can be perfect, the word doesn't lie, so then we can be perfect. So, so what does that mean? And, and then the Lord explained to me, when I was in Bible school, I learned 
that sanctification, becoming perfect, is a process of sanctification. Right. And sanctification is is a multi-dimensional. Um, it has two dimensions. One that is um, immediate, okay, because in, when you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, okay, you the you you've been washed by the blood of the Lamb, and the Lord sees you through the blood of the Lamb. And that's horizontal. And then there's one that is vertical, okay, that moves like this, and that is progressive sanctification as the Lord shows you those things that you need to repent and change from on your daily life. And and I want to read um, Philippians 3.12, okay? So can you read that? And, and, and so we have to understand that we need to seek to be holy, okay? And, and I want to... And... And many, I want to read this to you, okay? And the Word of God says, Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. That's in Deuteronomy 18.13, right? That's in the, but people say, Oh, but Sister Mary, so that's in the Old Testament, okay? Mm -hmm. Amen. And then in Colossians 2.28, which is in the New Testament, it said, It was not until our own dispensation that Christ was preached, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Wow. Amen. So read that. And then Philippians 3, 12 says, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Wow. Wow. So read it again so they can... Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, meaning that we're not there yet, but I press on that I might lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Wow. Wow. It's amazing. That's amazing. So we press on. We press on. So we that we can become what it is that Christ has called us to become. Okay. Right. And there's an example in the scriptures of a man that was wicked. He was an adulterer. He stole. He killed David. But in the word of God says that David had the heart of God. Okay. And I want to read you Psalms 101, 2. And it says, David was not persuaded that perfection was impossible. For he declared in one of his inspired Psalms, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Wow. It's a matter of the heart. heart. It's a matter of the heart. Wow. And then Sheila, the one that finished killing me when we were talking about this, was Matthew 5, 48. That says, be ye therefore perfect. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Lord, that's it. Whoa. Just, just roll me over with the truck. What do I need to change? What do I need to do to be like you asking me to be? How do you become perfect? It's a life of what? Surrender. surrender. Total surrender. Constant and, surrender. And consecration. Mm -hmm. So how can we explain to them what is surrender and consecration? You know, the Apostle Paul said, I die daily. Mm -hmm. And that means that each and every day, even as God's mercies are fresh and new every day, when we arise from our pillow, it's our heart's desire and it is our prayer that God comes first and that we are willing to accept and to do and to be what he expects and wants us to do and to exemplify every day mm -hmm. and it's not from a position of 
just because it's the right thing. It has to come from a heart that loves the Lord, that truly and sincerely loves the Lord and is willing to do anything because we love the Lord. Amen. So we need to live a life of repentance. A life of repentance, a life of self-examination. Absolutely. And keep a short list. And, and um, one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 139, 23 and 24. Search my heart, O God, to see is anything in me that is not pleasing to yes. you. Yes. That should be our prayer every, every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Is it? It's very easy because like at first, the Lord in this process of perfection, at first, you know, the easy stuff, um, don't smoke, don't drink, don't be an alcoholic, don't be a druggie, don't be an adulterer, you know, but then don't envy, don't be jealous, um, don't gossip, those things that are of the heart, that's it, those are the ones that are difficult, and believe me. When people do things to you, you get mad, you get, you want to retaliate, you want to do all these things, and you got to catch yourself and say, no, in the name of Jesus, no, and you got to say, Lord, I repent, and, and, and just surrender to him, and every day, it's a, you have to, the word says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Renew yourself at the transforming of your mind by reading the scriptures. Absolutely. Ooh, it's a hard one, you know. But if we want to walk in miracle signs and wonders, we got to be perfect in Christ. We do, and that means we have to have a teachable spirit. Oh, yes. We have to have a teachable spirit to accept, I didn't do it right this is not the way you expect me to do it, Lord. I'm sorry. Right. And I receive your rebuke. I receive your words of wisdom and correction. Mm -hmm. And I am going to take heed, which means I'm going to do an about face to do it the right way. <laughs> A teachable spirit. Okay. And let me give you an example. When a lot of times people come to us, I and mean, to you too, they want guidance, okay? But then I spend a whole hour and I talk to them and, and I give them guidance and then they don't do what we counsel them to do. They just came because they wanted a stamp of approval. Mm -hmm. And oh, they want people, they want you to agree with them. And, and, and I, I catch myself sometimes when, even when Dexter's talking to me, I go, oh, I know that. Oh, I know that. Oh, I know that. I need to stop and bite my tongue and listen. And listen and not be a know-it-all. We all have things that we can learn from each other. Absolutely. And it's so important that we have a teachable spirit. Because God wants to teach us new things every day. And he might want to use that person that you don't think is special to teach you something. You know, because what does the word says that he uses the foolish to confine the wise. That's right. So we got to be humble and have a teachable spirit. Amen. Amen. And, and the other thing he said, number, I mean, these three things are already like, ouch, 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 I know. ouch. And there was 11 of them. By the time Dexter read all of these, I was like ready to go under the table and hide. <laughs> um, Christ, our example. Mm. And I want to go to 1 Peter 2, 21 to 23 and, 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 and read about this. Amen. Praise God. Amen. First Peter two twenty one to twenty three. Amen. Okay. Okay. And it says, "To this you were called." Okay. We're, go we're called to this because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example 
that you should follow in his steps, okay? So we're going to follow in Christ's steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. Wow. So we have to live for righteousness. So if Christ is an example, what happened when people insulted him? Did he retaliate? Not at all. Um, when they, what did he do with his life? He laid it down. He laid it down completely. Completely. And he completely trusted the Lord. So if you want to work in miracles, signs, and wonders, you got to lay, lay down your life. You got to lay it down. You got to lay it down completely to the Lord. Wow. Woo. It is amazing. And he is our example. Yes. So we need to look to him. How did he respond? How did he behave? What was Christ thinking? Not my will, but your will. And the word says that he only did what the Father told him to do, Sheila. That's right. So he waited for the orders and instructions from heaven. Wow. That brings me to... He's being in the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. And he said, if you will, let this cup pass mm -hmm. from me. But when he came to the point of realization that he must drink of the cup, he said, mm -hmm. not my will, but thy will be done. And I think there comes a point for each of us when we get to that point that we're willing to lay our life down as we count the cost, we know that we must drink of the cup in order to do that. You know, um, I want to read from the, this something he wrote here, Brother Allen, that is very, that really touched me. He says, before, if we're going to, Christ is our example, that means that we got to walk like Christ, right? Right. So before one can walk as Christ walk and talk as he talk, he must first begin to think as Christ thought. This is possible only when we bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 5, which, which you just was saying. This doesn't just happen. It is an act of determined consecration requiring purpose and continual application. For the mind loves to wander. It is also requires a willing exchange, giving up the formal ways of thinking and accepting as our own the mind of Christ. And, and then he quotes Philippians 2, 5, that says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Wow, I think that's very powerful. Very powerful. And I think we need to stop here and we need to pray that we have the mind of Christ. Amen. So can Amen. you do that? Yes. So Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. we thank you for the revelation of your word. Yes. And we thank you now, Lord, yes. that we surrender. We thank you, Father, that we take upon us the mind of Christ, mm -hmm. that you become our example, Lord, mm -hmm. that we will hear your voice, the voice of a stranger we will not follow, that we will do your will at all times, Lord, that we will humble ourselves before you so that we can walk in yes. the full stature of the perfect man. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Wow, that is powerful.
So I'm going to read Luke 9.23, and I want you to look for 1 John 3.6. The next number five that the Lord told A.A. Um, a. Allen to walk in miracle signs and wonders was to deny yourself. Ooh. Okay, and, and I want to read Luke 9.23. Three. It says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Wow. Mm. So the path that Jesus walked is self-denial. So if you want to walk in miracles and signs and wonders, you have to deny yourself. Not my plans, but, but the Lord's plans. Not my perceptions, the Lord's perceptions. Not my purposes, the Lord's purposes. Amen. Amen. So can you read 1 John 3, 6? And 1 John 3, 6 reads, Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Wow. So we have to deny ourselves. So we have to wait on the Lord for the orders. Absolutely. His timing, not ours. Mm -hmm. He, you know, and like the sons of Issachar, they know the seasons and the times. Right. And um, you have to deny yourself and say, and wait on God to see what he wants you to do. Right? Amen. And wait on God um, to see if he wants you to pray for this one, if he wants you to pray for that one. Wait on him to give you instructions how to pray for somebody. So before you start praying for somebody, you got to wait on him for him to speak to you, to show you, or to even give you permission to pray for that person. That's true. Right? That's true. Um. And, and we cannot be in such a hurry. We're always in a hurry. And we always want to do that. My first instinct is to get it done, get it done, right? <laughs> and because I'm a productive person. And, and we got to wait on God. Yes. And, and when we wait on him, we wait on the guidance of the Holy Spirit, then the anointing comes. The power manifests. Amen. That's good. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Pentecost came when they waited how many days? Ten, Ten days. days. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Daniel's vision came after he waited and prayed for how many days? Twenty-three Twenty days 23 of days. waiting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Psalm 37, 7. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for, for him. So we have to deny ourselves and wait on God to see what he wants us to do. If he wants us to buy that house, right. if he wants us to marry that person, if he wants us to go into ministry. Self-denial is, it encompasses so many areas of our life every facet of our lives how have you had to deny yourself for the for the sake of the gospel you know oftentimes as women we love to go to the mall we love to spend time with our friends there are mm -hmm. so many things we love to do but denying yourself may be that this day that you had planned to go out and have fun with your friends and the holy spirit says not today not today. I have something else that I want you to do. It's being able to surrender to that gracefully and willingly, knowing that it's working a greater weight of glory. Amen. And, and, and sometimes it's um, oh, talking to that person that is inconvenient. That's true. And sometimes it's doing something that you really don't, don't want to do. do. Um, sometimes is submitting to your husband. Oh, that's yeah. a big one. Right? That's a big one. That's a big one. So it's like sometimes is biting your tongue and not saying 
that smart remark to that person. I mean, it's self-denial is difficult. It is. It's a discipline. It's a discipline. That we have to learn in order to be totally submitted to the Lord. You know, I was talking to Dexter about this, and, and he said, what you do is you say, you think, why would Jesus do? And then you say, you ask, if you're in a difficult situation, you ask, Lord, give me the wisdom to speak, give me the wisdom to act. He says, you don't have to respond immediately. You can say to the person, well, why aren't you answering me? You can say to the person, well, I'm praying to see what wisdom I'm getting from God. Amen. And then, Amen. so, and, and, he, and that helped me a lot because I'm a little spitfire, okay? So, <laughs> and then that's interesting you say that. The thing that the Holy Spirit showed me, three words, stop, drop, and review. Stop. Stop. Drop, drop and review and review can you can you elaborate on that yes stop before you are ready to answer immediately and maybe answer in a way that would not be the best way mm -hmm. you stop for a moment to drop means that you now submit yourself to the Holy Spirit to ask for his guidance and the review is the response that you get from the Holy Spirit yes yes because we have a struggle of our flesh and our spirit, okay? So when we stop and we drop and we review, we let, we can let, we can say, what does the word say? What is going on? And then we can test our response. Absolutely. With what the word of God says. Absolutely. And that's so important, you know, and it keeps you out of trouble big time. You know, it really does. Amen. It really does. Amen. And then another thing that the brother said, um, number six was the cross. And it was amazing. And this was number six. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, which we just finished talking about, and take up his cross daily and follow me so if you want to work in miracle signs and wonders we have to take up our cross daily and follow jesus okay because little is gained if you deny yourself but if you don't follow the lord jesus christ amen okay because you and 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 how do you follow the lord you have to know the word you have to know what his commands are you have to know what that means. So let's go to Hebrews 12, 2, okay? And let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. And I mean, we're, we're preaching this to ourselves too. Because I need all the help I can get. Amen. We both do. <laughs> Amen. Okay, it says here, let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endureth such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Wow, so you will not grow weary and lose heart. Wow. So we have to know that we are in a race. And we have to depend wholly on the Holy Spirit to empower us to run this race. And that we have to keep our eyes on the finish line which is when we die, we go to our hope of glory, which is with the Lord in heaven. So we have to understand that because hope deferred makes the heart sick. sick. Mm -hmm. So we have to not grow weary and lose heart. 
and keep our faith and, and, and trust in the Lord. So many people lose faith and they, and they get tired. They grow weary. They grow weary. And, and it's so important that we understand that, that we have to keep going. We have to keep looking at the cross. We have to keep reminding ourselves of all the blessings that we have in the cross. Atonement, justification, sanctification. redemption, sanctification, healing. healing, deliverance. All these things, atonement, hope, hope, redemption. Um, I mean, we have to keep that alive. Yes. And the only way to keep the cross is to learn about Jesus and to learn about the promises of God. Amen. Amen. And, you know, Sister Sheila went through something very difficult, you know, in, in, the, in this year. Her husband went to be, he graduated to heaven. Amen. He went to be with the Lord. And I saw how she kept her eyes on the cross and she didn't lose heart or hope. It was painful, but I want you to tell him a little bit about how you were able to just look at the cross and find that strength in the Lord. You know, the Word of God says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. And during this, um, I will say during this period, that became so true for me. In the Amplified Bible, it says that those that lean on and rely on, and I always saw that particular phrase as meaning, I'm standing up, but behind me is the Lord, and he's holding me up. And therefore, because he's holding me up, because I'm leaning and relying totally on him, I'm able to withstand. And I can tell you, every day I realized that I needed fresh oil mm -hmm. every single day fresh oil and that came from spending time in his presence from hearing his word from spending time in prayer all of those things are elements that together give us the strength that we need to be able to face amen. any difficulty amen wow and, and you know that takes humility when you completely surrender to what God is doing, you know, and you have to fully trust and you have to know that all things work together for them that love the Lord. Amen. And, 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 and there come times in your life where you just have to hold on to the Lord. You got to trust that you trust that you trust. And, and the things that are happening might not be what you wanted to happen, but you have to say, not my will, your will, Lord. You know what is best for me. And you just have to say, oh, here I am. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. Yeah. Yes. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a hope and a future and not to harm. Amen. And, you know, it is amazing. It is amazing, amazing. We've only done six, but I'm going to do part two, and we're going to do the other six, okay? And, but it, it, we just have to trust. You know, we got to trust. I waited for 13 years for her husband. Wow. And the Lord used to give me that verse for, uh, um, for the vision tarries, wait for it, for it will certainly come. Have a cook. Mm -hmm. Have a cut two, three. And... Either you have faith or trust or you don't. And I held on to that like for 13 years. And it came true and it was Amen. worth the wait. Amen. God always knows what is best for us. You know, I, I love Willie, Sheila's husband. But when he died, I cried. It hurt my feelings. And, and then... I said, okay, Lord, it was his time to go to heaven. And you know what is best for him and for Sheila. And, and then the hope of glory came into my heart. 
because then I'm like, oh, he's not sick anymore. Amen. Oh, he's walking on streets of gold. Amen. Oh, he's seeing the crystal sea. Oh, he's with Jesus. Oh, he's sitting at the right hand of the, the Father. Father. Yes. Oh, he's praying for us. He's part of the cloud of witnesses. Amen. Amen. So all these things, you know, we got to look to the cross. Absolutely. We got to look to the cross. Amen. Amen. So um, we have like four minutes. So I'm going to start. You start praying and then I'll finish praying. Amen. So yes. Father, we thank you for everyone who is watching the program yes. today. We thank you, Lord God, that yes. you have said that the word of God is a light yes. unto our path yes. and a lamp unto our pathway. Yes, Father. We thank you, Father, that everything that has been shared today yes. will be of use to your people. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, that you would meet every yes. person at the point of their need. Yes, Father, Father, as we seek you to walk in yes. those signs, wonders, and miracles that you have promised we would, Father, we lay down our lives and we surrender afresh to yes. you so that we can be vessels and conduits that you can use for your glory. You have said, Lord, that if we, if we lift you up, yes. then you will draw all men unto you. And we ask you today, Lord, that those who are, um, whose hope has been diminished, Lord, we thank you, Father God, that you would renew and refresh their hope. We thank you that joy would come to those who need it so that they can be strengthened. We thank you that those who need empowerment and need direction, Lord, that you would provide yes. it. Father, those who need healing, we thank you that the Son of Righteousness is arising now with healing in his wings. Yes. We just thank you right now that those who do not know you, as you knock on the doors of their hearts, Lord, that they would open to you. Father, that they can walk in the fullness and in the joy of the Lord. We bless you, Father, and we thank you for all you're doing amongst your people. Father, that we would be the people of your name, that we would walk in your way, that we would be humble, that we would be totally surrendered to you in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Father, we just choose to, to, to deny ourselves, to look at the cross, to be perfect, and, and to do all these things to get closer to you, Father so that we can walk in the fullness of the anointing that we, you have for us. Father, we just declare that the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon us because He has anointed us to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent us to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness the prisoners and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Father, we just delight greatly in the Lord, and we rejoice in our God, for he has clothed us with garments of salvation yes. and arrayed us with a robe of righteousness. Father, we just thank you for Jesus, our Savior, our yes, Lord. Lord. And we just thank you for him, and we thank you that he's at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. And we just choose to love him, and we declare him our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. We just thank you, Lord. Father, we just want to know you and to follow you in the power of the resurrection. In Jesus' name. I want to encourage you to go to YouTube, to go to shalomshalom.org, to our YouTube channel, and subscribe there to our YouTube channel. I also want to encourage you to... Um, Send us your prayer request, your testimonies, or any questions that you might have so we can respond to you. And I want to remind you of our special project for Shalom Shalom, sending food to the poor. If you want to make a contribution, you can write to me at shalomshalom.org, get the address on the on the screen and I can tell you what, how you can help. You can donate rice or you can donate money towards the shipping. But we want to bless poor families in Venezuela because there's no food there, Sheila. Right. I'm so excited. Every time I get a little bag of rice or black beans, I get so happy. Amen. Amen. Because I want to bless those people because I love them. And remember, the Lord loves you. The Lord wants you to be a light, the salt of the world. He's anointed for you, you to walk powerfully. God bless you. This has been your program, Jeremiah 2911, um, with your host, Dr. Marisol Peltzer, and my husband, Reverend Dexter Peltzer. 
Thank you, Sheila, for being in the program. What a blessing. I'm going to invite you, you again. Amen. Thank you for inviting me. What a blessing. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening and see you next time. Shalom. Blessings. Bye -bye. Shalom.